Welcome to the Intoxicated Podcast, a weekly comedy talk show that dives into the personal lives of comedians, experts, and creators. I'm your host, Sarah McClellan, a very amateur stand-up comedian and self-proclaimed sad girl. It's the comedy podcast with a lot of heart. Feel hard and talk hard. This is the Intoxicated Podcast. All right, everybody. Welcome back. It is the annual Intoxicated Halloween special, and I could not have a more appropriate guest for this episode. I'm so wildly excited. I've wanted to have this, this guest on for so long. She is the co-host on East Link's Haunted, and she has also pro- hosted and produced two podcasts One is A Girl Named Whiskey, which is an amazing solo podcast about conspiracy theories. And the other is Booze and Bourbon, which is all things whiskey and the paranormal. Correct. Nailed it! (laughs) It is Kim Moser. Welcome! I am so happy to be here. This has been a long time coming. This has been such a long time coming. And like, we've been, I've known about you for a while. Yeah, I've known about you for a while, too. Yeah. The podcasting space, it's, like, weird. It's, like, we all kind of know each other, but we don't really know each other. Yeah. And what's weird is the second I walked through your door, I was like, I feel like I know you. Isn't that so weird? So cool, though. I love it. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. And we are going to talk all about, like, you are in the coolest, you're in the coolest space ever. Paranormal stuff. Like It's weird. Is it? It's weird, yeah. Because it can mess with you. Oh, I bet I can. I don't even know where to begin. Like, I feel like there's there's a lot to touch on here. First question to you, I guess, would be like, was there an experience like that got you into this? Did Was there a moment? Did something happen that made you like get interested in the paranormal? Okay, Tal. Love it's, to know. It's personal. So when I first started talking about it, it was very odd to kind of like let my friends and family and people that didn't know me in on why I was so interested in the paranormal but um I guess I was probably graduating from university it was that summer and um I knew that my grandmother was ill and she was living in a nursing home close to where I lived but I didn't think she was passing away anytime soon like we knew that we had about a month with her And so I was toying with the idea of going to visit her. My mom went to go visit her and my mom was like, you know, I don't know if it's a good time for you to go just because you might not recognize her, that sort of thing. And so I was like, all right, I'll just listen to my mom, but I really need to go see her. And so my best friend was coming over that weekend, her and her boyfriend, and we were late night drinking, playing cards. It was like Friday night and we went to bed and... When I woke up at like 2.30 in the morning, my boyfriend was walking into the bedroom at the time and he woke me up and I was just crying and he was like, what's wrong? And I was like, my Mimi is what I called her. I was like, my Mimi passed away. And he was like, no, you just had a really bad dream. Go back to sleep. (gasps) And I was like, no, no, no. Like I, I saw her and I felt her and I could even smell her. And the weird thing was it was an all white background in this dream and there were like hundreds of people in these little groups talking to one another and she just said to me she was like I'm going now dear like as if she was leaving a party and I was like okay bye Mimi I love you she's like I love you too and that was it and then I woke up and my mom called me the next morning super early in the morning and she was like I'm just calling you to let you know that your grandmother passed away last night and I was like mom I know and she's like how do you know I'm like, uh, I don't know. I, I know she passed away like around 2.30. And she was like, yeah, she passed away around 2.15. Stop 2:15. it. That's crazy. To the, like down to the time. Yes. So uh, there was, I mean, there's a lot of coincidences in life. And there's a lot of things with the paranormal that you could be like, yeah, oh, that's a coincidence. Or maybe yeah. you're just trying to put two things together. Yeah. But that really propelled me into researching and reading and finding out as much as I could about the paranormal. And remind me, how old were you at this time? Um, would have been like 22-ish. Oh, okay, so a little older than I would have thought. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was weird. That's wild. Yeah. And you've been kind of hooked ever since? Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. And then a girl named Whiskey, by the way, everybody, please check out this amazing podcast because this is, you did this all on your own. Yes. Um, this is about conspiracy theories, it's which is such a rabbit hole. Yeah to go down <laughs> i love it though and i just love like everything you like that was such a cool project that you did what inspired that um probably i just needed that extra creative outlet yeah and i would find myself researching these really weird stories and then hearing these really like weird little facets of information and i'm like i need to research more of that i need to put that together and I was kind of toying with the idea of doing a different podcast like that for one yeah. year. So I kind of did like a pilot just for myself to listen to and listen, like get my close friends to listen to as well and get them their, their input. It's a great idea. And uh, yeah, so then I started it. I was like, no one's holding me back now. What's stopping you? Might as well, <laughs> might as well do it. Yes. And the thing is with conspiracy theories, and I don't know if you subscribe to this, but like, we're not saying that we believe it. No. But it's enjoyable. Yeah, it's a to good learn about trip for your brain. The Diana one was crazy. I know. Like the, the fact Nova that people Scotia have you heard this, Sarah? This conspiracy, just the idea that uh, she might still be alive. Oh well, yeah. Like there's been like multiple sightings of like people who, like that, like people that like look like her or like look close to identical to her. Mm-hmm. Out there. That's just like Tupac though. People think Tupac's still alive. Yes, they do. So, and that was also that one was of the also episodes. an episode. <laughs> and you, oh. how many episodes of this? Uh six, I six. think. Yeah, good amount though. Like it's just it's just really cool to do like a standalone project where you can go. I did the cool thing, and like here it is, all packaged for you. And I asked you, like I asked you before we hit record, if you were going to return to it, and it's there if you want to go back. Yeah. You don't have to. You don't have to go back. There's no pressure. It's like here's a series. Mm-hmm. Binge it, and maybe I'll be back, but maybe not. Exactly. <laughs> Which is so nice. Yeah, it's fun. That's wild. And so then you, so what got you into the actual TV side, like Haunted? First of all, tell everyone about Haunted, because this is this is our version of like, can I say Ghost Adventures? Not quite, yeah. but it's yeah. kind of our little version of that type of show. So like, tell, tell everyone about that. Well. Haunted. So it is on um, Eastlink TV. So it's something that only if you're an Eastlink subscriber and you have Eastlink cable that you can watch. But there is hope that we're going to go to like a a universal sort of streaming platform at some point. That'd be amazing. Which is really exciting. Um, but yeah, it's it's a group of local people from HRM, basically. And uh, we go and we check out different haunted locations. We've gone to New Brunswick a couple of times, PEI a couple of times, but mostly all Nova Scotia locations. We talk a little bit about the history of the place. Um, we don't ever bring like the people who own the place or the people that right. work there. We don't ever bring them on. But it's more of like, let's do a walkthrough. Let's see what we feel. And then let's bring out all of our ghost hunting equipment and see what we can find. Oh my gosh. And how long have you been with Haunted? Uh, this will be, I'm going into season eight soon for filming. So this will be five, six, fourth season. Holy smokes. Four seasons with a paranormal show. Yes. I have like, I have just so many questions. Like I have questions about the production, but then also just like the whole experience of this. For like, do you actually see ghosts? Are you someone who's... Have you seen one? Have you seen okay, one yet? So when you say ghost, you're when probably spirit. picturing say... like the sort of white translucent looking human yes. figure. Yes. I have not seen that. Okay. But I have seen a full on blacker than black shadow person. Oh, for fuck's sakes, those things. So have I. and this wasn't in a like a sleep paralysis no this was like you saw it when you were awake yes that ghost hunting okay more than once or just the once uh no so we actually um my co-host for booze and bourbon jen her and i and my husband went to kentucky and we went to go to one of the most haunted locations in the whole world. It's it, called Waverly Hills Sanatorium. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's the first time I ever saw a shadow person. And it was really far away. And the, sh- the movements were very scattered. It was very, very weird. And it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, my, my mind and my eyes could be playing tricks on me right now. Mm-hmm. 
But what I saw at the Boscowan Inn in Lunenburg was a full on like from me to you. Oh my god, that's terrifying. And I didn't see anything from the waist down, but I definitely saw like the shoulders, the arms standing there. And at first I thought it was the owner's like 13 year old son just standing in the hallway. And it was lit probably like this. The walls were white behind it. And I was starting to go up the stairs. And as soon as I got to the third step, I looked to my right. And there it was just looking at me. And I was like, oh, that's the kid. And then I looked again and I'm like, I can't see a face. (gasps) Yeah, it was really creepy. (laughs) And what do you do? When you're in that moment, what kind of person are you? Are you someone who, are you a screamer? Do you jump? Are you calm? Like, I feel like there's so many, like, I feel like I would be a freezer. Like, I would probably freeze and not really react. But, like, what kind of person are you when it comes to, like, experiencing these paranormal experiences? So, in that particular situation, I... I knew the place was haunted and I was freaked out about being kind of segregated from the rest of the group, we'll say. Um, I was like, I don't want to be alone. So if anybody's going to like show themselves, please make sure that the whole group is here. All nine of us can see you. And then I'm feeling super brave and I'm like, hey, does anybody need any more ghost hunting equipment? So I go down to the second floor, grab a whole bunch of ghost hunting equipment. So I'm by myself and I'm marching up the stairs with all this equipment and I see it. And I just, like, I don't even think I stopped for one second. I just, like, (laughs) went faster up the stairs. And then I busted by our um, audio, our audio guy. I was like, sorry, Tamer, I'm coming through. And I was like, oh, my God, what did I just see? What did I just see? And, like, my heart was racing. And I wasn't screaming. I was just really fast and really out of breath. Really worked up. Really worked up. The adrenaline you must, like, experience in that moment must be insane. Yeah, and it's also just as bad if you hype yourself up enough, too. If you're like, I know I'm going to be in this room all by myself, and there's just going to be a camera, and it's really dark, and nobody else is going to be around. What if I see something? In that moment, I feel just as scared as if I just saw something. Right. (laughs) Wow. So you've actually been alone in these haunted places by yourself in the dark. Yes, but not like overnight by myself. Not overnight. That would be the epitome of hell for me. Oh, my gosh. Have you ever been overnight with other people? Yes. Okay. And that must be friggin' fun. Oh, my gosh. Well, fun. I guess is fun the right word? It's fun in the sense that, I mean, you must enjoy doing this type of thing. That's why you do it. But it yes. is scary. Mm-hmm. Um, what about, like, when you walk in to a venue or a place? Is there a different feeling? Are you someone who can walk in and go, something's not right here? Something's, something's not right here. Something in the air. The energy. Yeah. Yeah? For the most part, yes. Yeah. Sometimes places totally take you by surprise. And you're like, oh, this looks really haunted. But then you and don't then get anything. Nothing. Yeah. Well, that was going to be my other question. Because I feel like with these with these shows and, and, you know, like media and stuff, a lot of times it, there's a lot of hype. Yes. And then there, there, with that hype, there must come disappointment <laughs> sometimes. Sure. Like whale watching, you know? Exactly. You know, ghost hunting is kind of like whale watching. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you might not see one all the time or hear one or experience one, but, you know, you might enjoy the, you might enjoy the boat ride, you know? Yeah. You might, I think so much of it is actually just being in the space. Cause like, like you said, you, you look into the history of it and you, you know, the stories behind these, these locations. So it's kind of cool just being there. Definitely. So if you experience something, it's a bonus, right? Yeah. So we've gotten to explore some pretty uh, historical places this past season. And we have some more lined up for this season. We're going to go to the Citadel Hill this year. Oh! Which is going to be great. But uh, one of the spookiest places that when you walk there, you can just feel Mm. it is Lewisburg. Wow. Yeah. That would be thick, I can imagine. And the fog is thick. And there's always like a mist going on. And you lose sense of direction because you hear the waves behind the fortress. And then you hear the waves on the other side. And it's it's really spooky. Does it need to be dark for ghosts to come out? No. Yeah. It no. doesn't. I feel like all these shows, like, it's always dark. It's always at nighttime. Like, you need, I'd love to see a paranormal show that, that goes out at 12 noon. <laughs> you know? Broad fucking daylight. Just, just have some brunch and go ghost hunting. <laughs> 
<laughs> can you imagine? Like, but sometimes that would almost make it scarier because you're not. As soon as you're in darkness, you're like, this is this is creepy. This is scary. This is scary. Something mm-hmm. scary is gonna happen. But if you were if you were to experience something with like in broad daylight, you'd be like, what? Yeah. Like this what? isn't supposed to happen. This isn't supposed to happen here. Yeah. What's like your favorite? Do you have a favorite location in Nova Scotia? It's well, I really, really did love Lewisburg. Yeah. That was amazing. That would be unreal. Um, but the two places that fucked with me the most. Mm. There's one place in the valley. It's called the Evangeline Inn. And there's like a cafeteria and there's a whole bunch of you know motel like very modern things but there's also an old historical home on the property and the second that we turned the lights off to start ghost hunting there and there was just sort of the ambiance of the red exit light above us things just changed shit and so there were three of us kind of standing in the hallway and two not myself but my two co-hosts swear they saw like a floating head (gasps) in a room next to them they both freaked out screeched left and i'm like oh i guess i'm gonna run with you guys because i don't want to stand here um so then the director dylan was like i need you to get a camera and go back down where the two of them were we're gonna talk about this so i'm like okay so get this camera and i'm like walking down the hallway and all of a sudden it sounds like i dropped like a lip chap on the floor, like that sort of plasticky sound. Like a like, plunk. Yeah, I'm like, that didn't come from me. But the second I thought that, I felt something push me. And I lunged forward because it wasn't just like a light push. It was like the sound I heard was like two hands hitting me on the back of my jacket and like pushing me. And so then I was like, oh my God, I feel cobwebs. I feel like this is I'm freaking out. And then... All of a sudden, we caught it on camera. The back of my hair starts lifting ah! up like this. Ah! It, ah! Was, it was too much. Like, it was, ah! it really messed with me because the whole time I've been, like, growing up and watching horror movies, I'm like, this can't, this can't happen. This, like, ghosts can't hurt you. But then they can push you, apparently. They can do little things. Like, they can pushing. bully you. Bully? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, like, you you see people with, like, scratches and stuff? Like, have you ever g- experienced anything that crazy? I, no. I no. Have, I have not gotten scratched. Um, so, yeah, that was the Evangeline Inn. But then the other location that definitely messed with me is a place called the Guysboro Courthouse. It's in Guysboro. Oh, shit. My dad was probably. My dad's a retired judge. And he <laughs> used to go there for work all the time. <laughs> ah! He's not dead, though. Not yet. <laughs> God. Oh my God. Um, Dad, no, please a, don't die. Super, super <laughs> creepy place. And we're going to get into a story about that later. Oh, but, shit. Um, the Guys Row Courthouse. Yeah. And it's an old courthouse? Yes. Or shit? And there was at least one public hanging there. <laughs> and to top it off, what their great, like what their, um, I was going to say graveyard, but what their parking lot is now is actually a graveyard. Wow. There's gr- there's dead bodies underneath that? Yeah. How is that legal? So apparently back in the day, because there was a jailhouse right next to it as well, um, if your family was like, that's Sarah, she's a bad girl, um, she's going to stay in jail, and you die, <laughs> and your family's like, we don't want to claim her, she was a bad girl, then they're like, well, let's bury her on consecrated ground, because it was consecrated oh, ground, so they would just bury them within the walls of the jail. The children they were ashamed of. Pretty much, oh, yeah. I'd be there. <laughs> <laughs> cheers to you. <laughs> cheers to that. Oh, we should do a cheers. Cheers. I mean, Kim's drinking whiskey. What are you drinking? I'm drinking vodka soda. Good for you. Which I think we're both on brand. <laughs> like, you got your whiskey. That makes total sense for you. You got your bourbon. Um. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. So many things going through my head. Right. Uh, I'm just trying to think. Okay. So... Those were the two locations that fucked with you the most. Yeah. And you know what? Maybe I'll just tell you the whole courthouse situation Yeah, now. let's hear it. Um, so we've dubbed it the Guysboro sh- Scratch because it's literally a scratching sound. So, like, for oh. all your viewers and listeners, I'm not crazy. <laughs> swear to God, I'm not crazy. Well, actually, before you get into the story, yeah. can I ask you just really quickly? Yeah. 
there's a stigma on people believing in ghosts. For sure. There is, people make fun of people who believe in ghosts. Totally. And there's different levels of believing in ghosts. I feel like you get a lot of people who go, well, I'm not going to rule it out. You know, maybe there's something, but probably not. Yeah. You also have people who probably take every single sound as something and probably yeah. read. So, like, where do you fall on this spectrum? And where do you fall in terms of what your actual belief is? Like, do you believe in afterlife? Like, Yeah, I, I definitely believe in afterlife. Yeah. Um, and I think that's more solidified because of the situation that I had with my grandmother in the dream. That is, like, such yeah. a – that's so – strong right like that that image um but in terms of like seeing a full-bodied apparition that is that's a stretch for me so yeah for most people when they talk about like ghost hunting and things like that they're like full-on 100 percent believers if they're a ghost hunter and i'm more on the side of caution i'm like I would like to discount a lot of things yes. before I actually believe that it was a ghost. This is, I think, a misconception. I think right. a lot of people think that ghost hunters or people who investigate just go in and, and like they make something out of everything. Yeah. But no, I think true investigators will debunk things like, oh, was there a draft? Was a window yeah. open? Was somebody in the building? Like, that's the true investigating part of it. Yeah. I don't know so, that my producer likes it when I'm skeptical like that because it doesn't make for good tv but mm -hmm. um yeah my mind always goes to like science first or like reality like kim like don't don't <laughs> there, there was no temperature change in the room there was just a draft it's an old house yes yeah. i love that though and i actually do like when there's a little bit of a contrast of personality types i think i think that makes for better tv when there's different viewpoints on the thing that happened right you know okay Guys, bro, courthouse, let's hear it. Okay, so we had a whole bunch of skeptics on our team as well. Love that. Um, which I, whenever it comes to, to people who are telling ghost stories or have ghost experience, if you're a skeptic and you're telling me a ghost experience, I'm like, yes, I want to hear your story. Yeah, it weird. makes it more believable yes. in a weird way. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So uh, we were, you know, just using a Ouija board. No big deal. It was, um, it was a handmade Ouija board that was given to us, and it was made by a Wiccan in Salem, and she hand-painted it, and she has, like, this box that she put it in, like a wooden box that was also painted, and she oh had, God. like, uh, a bunch of sage in it and so we're like yeah sure i mean this looks like a really great gift why wouldn't we want to use this listen of all the ouija boards in the world that seems like a safe one that like, she pro think? she protected it with sage yeah. and stuff yeah. right yeah she like she like it was a kit it was a kit it was a, kit. a ouija right. board kit yes you know you just go to spencer's and get a ouija board yes <laughs> okay go on yeah I so um, we decided we we're going to use it and we have a number of ghost hunting pieces of equipment, one of which is called an ovulus. So there's a number of things that the ovulus can do, but, um, in this one instance, we had it on the, um, dictation <sighs> side of things. So it would spit out words if it was feeling a difference in the environment or what have you. So I'm sitting there and I know you should never do this, but I was like playing the Ouija board by myself with the ovulus on top. And nobody else was around in the courthouse. You're not supposed to do that? No. Not supposed to use it alone? No, I don't think so. I don't think it's recommended. Oh, shit. Have you done it? Before? No. Okay. All right. <laughs> so I'm sitting there, and the ovulus is spitting out words at me, and I think the ovulus said something to the effect of, like, want. And I'm like, mm. oh, you want me to give you something? Okay, cool. And within that timeline, there was an orb which we're going to talk about later too we'll get into it um this orb didn't look like a normal orb there was like two balls of light kind of attached to it and it was kind of like going over towards the box and then it it dissipated and i'm like oh that's different okay so i only saw this on the camera later um because the director was like kim you got to come take a look at this when you're doing this whole ouija board thing so i looked at it and i was like yeah that's weird he's like let's go with the the whole narrative that um, something came over to the board 
and something was trying to get back in but when it tried to get back in you had the box closed so it couldn't physically get in I'm like okay so then I'm like well I'm gonna ask this thing to get back in the board so I opened up the box and I was like I'm gonna convince you to take my ring and it wasn't like my engagement ring it was just like a cheapy Claire's ring or something and I'm like I'm gonna give you this ring and I'm gonna put it in the box so I did and then we started doing this countdown and I was like, okay, from five, everybody, all nine of us were on the court, court, house, court, wow. It's a hard thing to say. I know. Court, house, room, yeah. floor. <laughs> court. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, and uh, so anyway, we did this countdown. We were like really into it. We're like, five, get in the board, four. Like we were very enforceful. And so when we hit one, we waited for a couple of seconds, didn't hear anything. And then we hear this scratching that was like <gasps> 10 seconds long as if something was dragging its nails across wooden floors. Was there a video of this? Did I see this video? The, yes. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. All of us like turned around and we're like, oh my God, did you <gasps> hear that? And everyone was like, yeah, that wasn't me. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. And it was so loud. We were all just like completely shook by the situation. Shit. So to make things worse, I can't entirely talk about it until like two months from now. But um, we investigated the house next door to the courthouse this season, and there were some direct correlations that were very personal that said same words and my name and a whole lot of Personal to you. In regards to that situation next door. So I'm like, does this thing know that we're next door? I'm, I'm, I got chills. That's wild. That's insane. Mm -hmm. While we're on the subject of Ouija boards, I need to ask you about Ouija boards. Sarah over here, producer Sarah, keeps asking me to let's do a Ouija board thing. I'm like, we got to ask him about Ouija boards. Yeah. What? I have friends who are like, don't touch them. Don't even get involved. What's the deal with these things? Is there a way to use them that's safe? Are there things you can do to like protect yourself like are there rituals like what's going on with ouija boards um i think when it comes to the absolute basics you always have to close out the board you gotta close it so you always have to say like goodbye goodbye yeah and i i think people will use candles like a white candle black candle um mm. and also it's probably a good idea to smudge it after smudge with, with sage, sage. Yeah. okay with uh what kind of sage? Because I heard that like white sage does something different and then like another oh. kind of sage. I just always use white sage. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this is my problem. <laughs> so Kim's like, shit, uh, I've been doing it wrong this whole time. Oh my God, I'm sure you're fine. <laughs> no, that's wild. Like I, so we had a Ouija board growing up mm -hmm. and it's so strange because, you know, like, like we go back to the stigma. People make fun of you when we talk about ghost stuff. I was always fascinated by ghost things. Yeah. My grandmother also was. She was oh. a believer in it. My mom was like, nay, 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 nay. No, no, no. Okay. But whatever, this Ouija board that I had, and I still to this day don't know where it is now. Maybe I should find out. But, like, my mom would just, like, keep it away. Like, she would put it, like, on a shelf far away, and she did not, like us using that i don't really blame her i mean i've had i've had lots of experiences with ouija boards and i can't say any of them are like yay that's a really <laughs> nice positive experience Shit. <laughs> yeah that's wild but they look pretty okay have you ever used one and had it actually move to spell something oh yeah and like you're not, t you're legitimately not touching it. Like I'm, t I'm like touching it, but yeah, you're supposed light, to. Okay, oh, yeah. light as a feather. We need to clarify this for everybody. You do need to touch the the triangle thingy. Yeah, like you can't just hover. No, you you need to. Your fingertips need to touch it very lightly. Very lightly, and you need to be still. Yeah, and the idea is the idea that all the energies of the people in the session channel. The spirit? Is Hopefully. That, hopefully that's kind of the intent. The more scientific side of things is that you've got these micro movements from like people's pulses and they're not consciously moving it. 
Mm. Maybe subconsciously it's moving around. Okay. Like if you ask like a yes or no question and you and all your friends think yes is probably a good answer, it's probably going to float over to the yes. Love this. This is a realistic approach to Ouija boards. <laughs> Does that mean we can use one now? Or <laughs> I mean, I'm down. Listen, the thing is with like all this stuff, I'm always down. I will always say yes. Yeah. Um, because I, I I've never experienced anything. I'm very prone to night terrors, which oh. are I feel they borderline the paranormal in a weird way because they happen. Most times they happen when you're just about to fall asleep, when you're in between worlds, so to speak. Mm. Like you could be doing some astral traveling type situation. I think I can do that if I honed in on it, honestly, oh with God. with all the sleep stuff that I that that I go through at night. I feel like I if I really honed it, I probably could. So here's a question. Have you ever like, quote unquote, had an experience close to astral traveling that you had somebody that, you know, like a friend, maybe it's Sarah. Um, that you see in this dream or this night terror and have you ever like called that person the next day to be like hey I had this crazy dream about you last night did you dream about me too not yet that would be so cool that would be so cool weirdly enough my dreams right now are very strange and I don't know why like I had a dream that I was stranded in the middle of the ocean on top of an iceberg and my boss saved me on a jet ski thank god (laughs) (laughs) that sounds awful I have, um, I'm very prone to um, reoccurring dreams or reoccurring themes in dreams. Gotcha. Water's very common, which makes sense. It means emotion. Mm -hmm. I'm like emotional AF. Um, Schools, I'm late for school. I'm late for class. I'm back in high school. I can't, I can't find my class or I'm late for a test. I have those dreams too. Yeah, constantly. Being late. I constantly have dreams where I'm. There's something important I need to get to, and I'm doing my makeup rushing. Gotcha. It's my wedding day, and my eyeliner isn't on. Like, stuff like that. Right. Like, it's... I'm just... I'm a stressful sleeper You always king. have somewhere to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Even in my, even, in my, <laughs> even in my dreams, I can't fucking escape it. Yeah. Oh, God. That's, that's crazy. So, Ouija boards... Whew. Okay. So, like, I think... I mean, we are 36 minutes in. I, I want to get to the assumptions segment. Yeah. Don't punch me in the face. Ow. Yeah. Because this kind of ties in with what we were talking about. So one of my assumptions that I had about you, because I don't know you that well, but I did some creeping online. <laughs> I love it. Here's my hot take about Kim. And you got to tell me if it's true or not. Yeah. Um, you are a spooky bitch that doesn't dress up for Halloween. It's somewhat true. Okay. Because I didn't see any costumes. Yeah. That's the... That's, so, mm-hmm. and I kind of have this theory that those are the true spooky bitches. I don't know. The like bells I, and whistles of the look of the spooky bitch. Right. You don't need those to be a legitimate... Like, you're a legitimate... Would you call yourself a spooky bitch? I guess, yeah. It's kind of a... Kind of I a, mean, I feel like I'm kind of like still in the closet, though. <laughs> But you work on really? a show called Haunted. I know. How are you not going to be spooky? I know. <laughs> You're like, this is my job, though. I'm going to work. Yeah. I, yeah. I would rather kind of, like, look like the Lara Croft. Like, I'm the... That's what you looked like situation. when you came in today. I was just like, you look like a badass, number one. Well, thanks. Um, but, yeah, I see you as someone who... You're not... You're not the outwards appearance of a spooky bitch, but inwards you are. Right. Yeah. No, I think that's a pretty good assumption. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, you know, in my younger years, I probably dressed up a lot more for Halloween. Are you big into Halloween? I feel like Halloween is year, probably year-round for you. I, I do love Halloween. Like, the bar area that I have in my basement, it's it's black. Like, it's always pretty goth-looking. Like, mm. I always have Halloween stuff around if I need to place them. Like, I've always got skulls out. My Fuck pillowcases yeah. have, like, little spiders and... And skulls and stuff on them, but like in a classy way. Classy way. Um, And then I always feel like Halloween teeters on like the slutty slash racist line. (laughs) 
So I tend to steer away from that in my later years. You are not wrong. <laughs> right? There's probably a lot of costumes that could get people canceled. Yes. And uh, how, how, do you mind me asking your age? No, I, I'll be 39 in a couple of days. Thir- what? Yes. Wow. Okay, 39. Yeah. So you were around, like, you got to have a childhood that wasn't on the internet. <laughs> yeah. I got Which to is go great. To the bars without cell phones. Yeah, I mean, cell phones are around, but the picture quality was so terrible. It could be anybody. It could be. It could be any, the flip phones, the it pixelated. Yeah, frig. Okay, so so do you do anything fun for Halloween, or like do you do anything spooky or special for Halloween? I, I used to always have a themed birthday party slash Halloween dress up party, which oh. was really fun. Um, but it was more when I lived in the city because there was a lot more people able to like come and visit and spend the night and all that kind of stuff so um, but yeah we we did we did like a celebrity uh, dress up party which was really fun um, and yeah we did an Amish party one year which was really fun everything was by candlelight and we all had fake names that <laughs> is wild <laughs> I love it yeah Wait, when's your birthday October 19th Oh my gosh! You're you're born at the best time. <laughs> it's like right there in the middle of. And fall. it's the best weather. Oh, yeah. Like it, yeah. it's just the best time. Ah, so are you witchy? No. Do you do witchy things? No, not really. I mean, I'm I'm really into spending time outdoors. Yeah, whether it's just you know in the woods or on the ocean, I'm very in tune with that. But I'm not like. A ritual kind of girl. Got you. Um, no, I have crystals. I don't use them very often. Yeah, I love like, I love that time of the day when it just starts to get dark and the love sunset that. and like I just love ambiance of like darker things. Yes, me too. Um, but not a witch. No, I'm not quite a witch yet. No, yet. <laughs> <laughs> that was a witchy laugh. <laughs> Like cackling, like, truly like cackling. I'm, I'm a witch. That's well, because I think that that's another misconception that like, like all these things fall into one. And no, it's like you can be really into paranormal stuff and not into crystals, or you know what I mean. Like all these things can be separate things that you enjoy. You can also like everything or nothing. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, skeptics are interesting though. Yeah, they are. Have you ever had an experience where a skeptic was like? blown away or like just fully like convinced uh, uh i mean that guys were a courthouse scratch thing oh my god that's that, so scary that really tripped so our audio guy Tabor, he then like he was kind of freaked out in the situation from my perspective he was anyway he was kind of like no that wasn't me um but then he went and he took the audio and he isolated the audio and i think that's when it really fucked with him because he heard things underneath the sounds that he shouldn't have heard that made him... Voices? No. How do I describe it? It's almost like, you know, like a mouse, like a Tom and Jerry situation where a cat's going after the mouse and the mouse is scampering. Yeah. So that noise was happening before the dragging that we should not have heard but when he isolated it he was like there's a whole other layer to this that i couldn't even imagine fuck that's wild i know and when you're actually doing these investigations um like we talk about closing out ouija board sessions yeah is there anything you do when like you have just a regular session that you close it out or you do you smudge? Like, is there anything like that that you do regularly with these? Um, yeah, I definitely, I definitely clear out my own home. Smudge. Yeah. Oh my god, that was gonna be one of my questions, which was yeah. like, has anything followed you home? And for me, like, some people will say if they put like a line of salt outside the perimeter of their home, then mm-hmm. no evil spirits are allowed entering. Or if you have a mirror by your front door, um, if a spirit was to enter through your front door, it would see its reflection and kind of like banish itself away so i have the mirror thing um but i also am big into envisioning white light so whether i'm driving or whether i'm going into my own house i just sort of envision a white light perimeter and i feel like that keeps me safe fascinating yeah 
it's weird. And that's kind of like where you saw your grandma too. It was all white. Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of it's it's almost like envisioning a, a, an environment of safeness. Yes. Kind exactly. of thing. So nothing's ever followed you home, so to speak. I don't think so. That's I don't think so. No. I can't say the same for my co-host on Booze and Bourbon, Jen, because she joined us for season five and six, and she's had some really messed up things happen at her oh, house in terms God. of sounds and footsteps and things moving and electrical and the whole nine yards. Poltergeists. Ew. <laughs> Ever ever had something be been like thrown at you or like, man, I gotta say the other night, I, I haven't even told you this yet. There was a night that my friend Danielle was over and she was trying to channel a friend of mine who passed away who I've been trying to connect with. Um, and it didn't it it was good but it wasn't like anything mind blowing. Right. When she left, so I had a pizza box on the on the um on the coffee table there and it was like open so like here's the pizza here's the cover yeah of the lid yeah and i shit you not the cover went and moved a bit and i didn't have fans on nothing and that was after she had left so strange that was a strange thing i've had like things fall that like shouldn't have fallen mm -hmm. but that's really about it for me in terms of like any poltergeisty experiences. yeah um i don't have any crazy experiences myself with poltergeists and knock on wood i don't want to um i think the slapping on my back thing was the closest i've encountered to a poltergeist i also haven't seen anything happen while we've been investigating that would make me believe that there's like a lot of poltergeist activity um but maybe at Jen's house. Wow. Like she has she has her door like swinging open and hitting the table on the inside of the door and like things flying off the wall and footsteps up and down the hallway all the time and her TV not working properly, like going to turn it on. And it's nothing but a blue screen. And does she have any idea like what that might be like what specifically what spirit it might be or not entirely. Really? Because she bought the house from um, a this this guy whose parents had both died not in the home but they had both died within like two weeks of one another so the house was kind of like left to the sun to sell and so a lot of the original owner's contents were in the house like oh. all of the mirrors which she's never gotten rid of she's kept the mirrors up which is <laughs> so that's fascinating i always wonder like if spirit stays with the physical objects you know like if it's she were if she sure. were to get rid of the mirrors yeah would it whoever got that mirror at a yard sale or something <gasps> like would they <laughs> would they would they pick that up Maybe. like that's that's a legitimate wow i do like antiques myself and i've had friends be like why do you do that i'm like well i really like it and they're like yeah but i'd be afraid something is attached to it and i'm like no it's fine but then the more i think about it i'm like hmm <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I'm not so sure. What are your thoughts on haunted dolls? Um, I think it's more of a phase than uh, <laughs> like a legit thing. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I, I think it's possible for yeah. sure. Um, I think you know, like um, Annabelle. Sure. Yeah. She's she's a haunted doll. But like people going to Value Village and like picking up a doll, being like, "Ooh, this one feels spooky," and then like doing this whole like taking a ghost hunting piece of equipment and being like, oh, I'm getting like a K2 hit on this one. And so it's probably haunted. I don't know. I don't really lean into that as much. I, yeah, no, that's legit. Yeah. It's probably, yeah. The reason I ask is there's a TikToker with a haunted doll who, yes. who named her podcast Intoxicated. <laughs> no. Are you serious? With a, she spelled it slightly differently. So she spelled it T A L K uh, X. X. A T E D. I mean, the greatest, <laughs> the greatest form of flattery is when someone compliments you, right? Well, that's the thing. I'm like, you you must know I exist because you you specifically spelled it a dumb way. Yeah, exactly. She was like, I want to be her, so 
<laughs> I mean, more followers, though, right? Some One of my friends was like, she has more followers, so she gets it. And I was like, frick, that's so cutthroat. <laughs> But she does just that she, on TikTok. She'll have a doll and then she'll have those rods. Yep. And she'll do, she'll, she, she'll like call the TikToks like talking to Marilyn Monroe or like these like famous people who have died and Thirsty. stuff. Thirsty. Yeah. It's a little clickbaity. Yeah, for sure. At first it was good. Like her older videos, like you're like, okay, maybe this could be legit. But like now you're like, uh. Mm. You're doing this. You're doing this for the views. There's mm-hmm. so many ways to try to connect with ghosts. What have you found to be the most impactful? Effective and impactful. Um, I think really you have to get the person or persons to trust you. So you can't just like walk into a space and be like, is there anyone here? <laughs> like, it's like a first have, date. Let's get I, to know I each other. I always feel like whenever I go in there, I'm like, hi, my name's Kim. <laughs> I'm here to learn more about you. And if you have a story to tell, like, tell it through me. And I would love to be able to let people know that you still exist. And, you know, if you have anything to say, like, get it out there kind of thing. Um, but, yeah, there's there's other ghost hunters that aren't so um, friendly and just kind of like yell at things but like okay let's let's talk about this for a second a ghost is essentially a human who's dead so would you talk to a stranger would, like yeah. scream at them and expect <laughs> them to like would you talk to a human like you? that exactly no. exactly so i think yeah i think That's getting them to trust you is a huge part of it um and in terms of ghost hunting pieces of equipment that i've used that i tend to get the most out of there's this thing called a rem pod which is like a little round cylinder. It has a whole bunch of different lights on it. It has an antenna. Um, I tend to ask the space or whoever is in the space to interact with it, and it almost always does. No way. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. Man. And are are, is this equipment like accessible to the average person? Can you just buy it, buy it on Amazon? Uh, Amazon, not so much, but if you go to ghoststop.com, you can find everything. Go stop. Sponsor yeah. this episode. <laughs> You're getting free advertising. <laughs> right. And do you have your own equipment or do you just kind of use what's... I have some of my own equipment. Some of it is currently in a Pelican case with the rest of our haunted stuff. Um, but I do have a K2 meter and I have a spirit box. Um, I do have dowsing rods, but they're not with me. Um, and I have like a crystal pendulum. Ooh. So I have a couple of things that I I like, but like the REM pod, I think is like five hundred bucks. That's pricey, but maybe it's because it works. Maybe you know, maybe you gotta pay the big bucks to get the good. <laughs> yeah. Good. What about EVPs? Can we talk about EVPs for a second? Because that shit is terrifying. Yeah, it is. And I mean, that's something that we could pick up right now, even if we wanted to, because we could we could pause and. Electronic voice phenomenon. phenomenon. Yes. Yes. (laughs) So have you ever experienced one of those? Yes. Oh, man. Also at the Evangeline Inn. I don't think it made the episode, though. Uh, But what was the lady's name? I think it was Marge. So an, an elderly lady used to run the hotel slash restaurant at the Evangeline. And she used to run the kitchen like a tight ship. And so we went in there and we were expecting like things to move around, like poltergeist activity, because that's what we heard from the staff there. And we get there and it's like so quiet. And I'm like, well, where's her favorite seat? So I went over to her favorite seat and I set up a voice recorder. And I was like, hey, Marge, if you're here, you want to come down and talk to me? We'll have a little conversation. And... When I listened back to it, I asked the question, um, do you know that you're dead? And I heard, I know. Ah! Yeah. It was crazy. (laughs) I know! Which is wild because people say that ghosts hang around because they don't know they're dead. But that, I don't know if I fully believe that. It could be just like an attachment, an emotional attachment to it, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, really. I know. 
oh, that's and like a whisper. Yeah. That I is know. so crazy. <laughs> and I and I think I even got more specific with the question. I think I I didn't I want to say I said something along the lines of, do you know you died on this property? Like, I think it was very specific. Right. Because she did. She died in her apartment, which was, like, part of the motel. Oh, my God. Yeah. She, she knows. She knows. Whoo! That's scary. And so I was also talking to my friends today who have been with Haunted since, like, day one. And they were telling me about this place in Shelburne, the Cooper's Inn. And this also never made an episode. But they um, left a voice recorder in this one particular room. And they took a break. They went for lunch. And they didn't hear any footsteps enter the room whatsoever. But they did hear the words whispered, be gone. And it was a female voice. And apparently there's a female who haunts the location. Huh. Oh, goodness. I know. See, stuff like that really makes me sad because I go, this person was probably dreadful in real life, and now they're sticking around still being a bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Forever and ever and well, ever. It, it, it does make you think, like, well, like, why why does spirit hang around? Why, why are... I always chalk it up to energy, and, like, I just... I don't know what I believe in terms of what happens when we die. I don't, I'm just a big, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I'm also a big, like, I am not an atheist. Like, I do think there's something. I just don't know what that is. Sure, yeah. Um, but I just refuse to believe that the essence of a human being, everything that makes a human a human being, mm -hmm. there's no way that can just be gone. Well, no, because you when can't, you, when you can't you get rid of energy. Can't get rid of energy. So, like, when you look at a, if you, this is a weird question, but have you ever seen a dead body? No, I don't think so. Like, y you can tell oh, I guess. they're not there anymore. Like, it doesn't look like someone's sleeping. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. You know. I, I automatically went to, like, car accident instead of, like, funeral. Oh. <laughs> um. <laughs> have you been in an accident? No. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So that's why I was like, no. I've yeah, 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 but, uh, yeah. I've, I've yeah. seen my grandparents at, yeah. uh, at funerals and stuff. And you yeah. can tell, like, they're no longer there. They're they're not with us anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just, I, I refuse to believe that like, there's nothing I can't. So there's also the theory of a ghost not staying in that one space for eternity, but maybe it's something that comes and goes or comes passes goes. by. That's what I like to believe. Yeah. I like to believe that, that they, I do kind of, this sounds cheesy, but when I think of my friend, this is kind of how I see him, which is like the guardian angel idea. The, mm. they're watching over. The people they love. I'm yeah. like, every now and then, if you're like, hey, can you help me out? <laughs> like they, 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 they Looking can, out for you. They can come in, you know? Like, like I, I actually do really, really believe that. So it's kind of a nice feeling, but ugh. It is. It's definitely a comforting feeling, too. Like, knowing that you could potentially call on somebody who was in your life and meant a lot to you to, like, hey, I'm going through a really tough time right now. Can you kind of, like, just make your presence known yeah. and just let me know that everything's going to be okay and then something's very small might happen but it makes you feel fantastic a like little comforted someone is watching over me yeah you had that experience when you were in your 20s with your grandmother with the with the dream yeah do you feel she's still with you uh occasionally yes yeah and i also have um kind of a motherly figure she was always kind of like a second mom to me and she passed away about three years ago and um it was it was really tough on me for sure, sure. And sometimes I'll just like be in my house and I'll be like, hey, Cheryl, how you doing? Kind of like, talk to I them. Know, I know you're around. So, yeah, you just like I get this feeling and I could be even like just looking at the microwave. But all of a sudden I feel her. That's wild. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's that is that is a really nice feeling. Yeah. And, and, and I know that this is what I'm about to say is going to sound dark as shit, but. <laughs> hear me out i'm not surprised <laughs> it's <laughs> it's nice to know sometimes if you're scared of death mm -hmm. there's people potentially waiting for you on whatever other side that is yeah that's how i like to see it yeah. so like my friend who passed away was a comedian and like i very much so view the afterlife like a comedy green room like mm -hmm. that i'm gonna walk into this green room and he's just gonna be like 
have you been? I've been waiting for you. Like, like, like I, uh, that's kind of how I see it. Yeah. Cause he was a comic and I see him, I see him. G- <laughs> this is so cheesy, Sarah, but like giving us the light, you know, like giving us the light, like you're done your set, you're done your life. Come join me. Let's hang out. Let's have our post show hangout. Like, yeah. In the afterlife kind of thing. Yeah. I think, I think that's a wonderful thought. Right. Yeah. I would continue to carry that with you. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the other thing is, too, I mean, there's this, none of us really know what happens when you die, but there's, you know, lots of theories and theories that I kind of like lean into a little bit more. But I, um, I think that, too, when somebody passes, they no longer have a definite sense of time. So, yeah. like, maybe they're not waiting for the next 60 years for you to pass away. Maybe it was only five minutes to them. Yeah. Or maybe it, maybe it was no time. Yeah. That's why. They just look over and like, oh, there you are. Yeah. I've been waiting for you, but it only feels like five minutes. I often, yeah, I'm someone who I, I, I really am trying to get a handle on my fear of death. I have a huge fear of it. I think about, like, you, I think you, you said before we recorded, get that intrusive thought out of your head. Yes. I have those a lot. I'm very much so, like, a lot of people talk about anxiety and being socially anxious. I'm, like, big picture anxious. Yeah. Like, I'm, like, a piano is going to fall on me as I walk down the street. Right. Like, existential, like, crisis thinker. That's funny, because oftentimes I'll be driving down the highway and I'm like, I'm going to be into a million pieces on the ground here. Like what why like why Why are we thinking these things i know and then tough i know and i think that's all part of being human though too like we want to chalk it up to like anxiety or like a mental health crisis or something but i think it's pretty normal like we know that we're going to die but when you look at our sweet little pets or our cats or something like they have no idea they're gonna die so they just like live their life and stuff right? yeah. like, but we know <laughs> like we know what's gonna happen so we have to like at some point not even necessarily come to peace with it, but at least accept that it's going to happen. That is, yeah, I'd like to get closer to that. Do you think actually being someone who investigates the paranormal and knowing a lot about this type of thing and like hearing all these stories, does that make it easier for you to accept? I think. Yeah, I would think so, right? Yeah, I think so. That's fascinating. I mean, there's there's obviously like, there's so many scary ghost stories and folklore even here in Nova Scotia that are very traumatic and scary. Yeah. But then there's a lot of people when you start talking to them, they're like, oh, I had this weird thing like my grandmother or my grandfather or my grandmother swears that this happened when her brother died. Like so many people have stories that yeah. I'm like, are we all insane or do we all have something that's very similar happen to us that we can talk about and get more comfortable? Maybe it's all part of becoming more comfortable with the thought of death. I have no that idea. Could be, that really could be it. I mean, so many women listen to true crime podcasts no. because we're often the victims of those crimes. Do you think that's why? Is this like, is this a scientific fact? I don't, I think on some level we want to prep ourselves mm. mm-hmm. because being a woman, we are in more dangerous situations. So if we're reading, like I personally can't do true crime. I did it for a bit. I had to stop because yeah. it was actually just playing into my, again, my anxiety of someone's going to break into my house and murder me. Yeah, no. Um, so I don't know what I need to do in my life to make myself feel safer to a point where I can enjoy that content again. Love ghost stories, love conspiracy theories, but like mm-hmm. the, the hearing about like true crime murders, I, 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 uh, I don't do well I, with that type of thing. But I do think that I think some women listen to that to be prepared in a weird way. Mm-hmm. It's a dark thought. But mm-hmm. Or know what to do if they're if in that situation. Wrongs them. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah. Are you into horror movies or like anything I'm, like that? I'm into more like psychological yeah, horror movies same. Yeah. as opposed to like bludgeoning bloodbaths. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not into slasher stuff. No, me neither. Ugh. Can't do it. Yeah. Um, okay. So I, because you told me beforehand, I'm excited to get to this segment, <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> which is the rant segment. It's the spooky rant segment. I need to rant yes, this time to, around. We have to make it spooky. Kim, what is your rant? What would you like to rant about? 
Um, even though I touched on the subject earlier about orbs, um, for the most part, I think that orbs are BS. And I, you know, I like to play around with my camera. So I see light reflecting into that every now and then. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then you see the random people that are on like Facebook groups and they're like, oh, look at my cute little toddler. And then my, my grandmother passed away like five days before this picture and there's this crazy orb. And it's like, no, there's a mirror behind your kid and you've got a flash on your camera. <laughs> um, and then there's, there's all these people who have like CCTV cameras or security cameras that are infrared. And they're like, oh, look, this thing crawling through my front yard. No, it's a fucking fly going across the lens of your camera. And it looks extra bright because the infrared light coming from it. Durr. So I've always kind of felt like, you know, there is the possibility of an orb. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Sure. But I think it's very far and few between. Right. So... My thing is, is like, what if a situation happens and like, say you're filming it mm -hmm. um, and yeah. there's a noise or someone feels a brush or your, you feel your hair go up or something. And in that moment, an orb goes by. Like, that's where I go. That might be believable mm -hmm. because the two things happen at the same time. What about that? Like, would you be more apt to believe about an orb then? I would be, yeah. but I have not yet seen it. Ooh. So sometimes when we're investigating, we have a bunch of CCTV cameras set up and they're all attached to a monitor. So I'll sit at the monitor station and I'll see all of these like really weird things. And then I have to remind myself, I'm like, they're currently in an attic that's super dusty. So sure. Yeah, it's a dust particle. Um, there has been maybe one instance where it looks like something's falling on somebody. Right. And they like brush their head, their head at the same time. And that makes me kind of wonder, but I still kind of discount it as like coincidence. Yeah. I, I could, I could you lean could... to like where you're going. Right. But I would have to err more on the side of coincidence. That's fair. Cause I gotta say not, ha not so much haunted. Well, I don't know about haunted cause I don't have these link, but a lot of paranormal shows love the orbs. Yeah. And you know what you can easily edit in? Orbs. orbs. Orbs! Or let's go outside and shoot right now and it's super humid or misty. Yeah! Out. Yeah! Yeah. Frig. Yeah. Okay. Is that a hot take in the paranormal space? I think so. Yeah, it kind of seems like it might be. Yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. not going to get in trouble on this podcast. I'm, I'm don't worry. Yes. Don't trying worry. To be good. <laughs> You'll be good. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't know what other shows do. I yeah. can only I can only say what we do. And we definitely look at orbs as being like, mm, probably not. Probably not. Do you ever get to a location and just go, there's nothing here. This is a total bust. Like, we can't do anything with this. Yes. But what's interesting is other people on the team will be like, no, this place is so haunted. Or they'll have oh. a situation. And I'm like, wow, I totally didn't feel that. We went to a location in season seven, which has not aired yet. Um, but everybody in the crew was like, yeah, because I'm usually the one that books the locations so they were like yeah this place is not haunted and then i'm like just give it just give it a minute just give it a minute and then one of them like was like i'm so sorry kim i ever said anything to you because this place was so haunted i'm like yeah i know we saw we saw like really crazy lights like really bright lights like you would think a car was driving by but there were no windows so it was very strange what like white shimmery lights whoa yeah that was a new one that's pretty wild yeah that's crazy <laughs> do you ever get so like i've seen a lot of like these shows um people get unbearably emotional sometimes or like almost like possessed like i don't know if i want to use the word possessed but has that ever happened to you or someone you know and haunted like where it's been m not so much a I physically felt something or I saw something, but like I'm so overcome with a certain feeling. Yes. Ooh. And it's going to come out in season seven. Oh my God. Was it you? Somebody At got Lewisburg. possessed. Um, myself and my coworker, my co host, we, we definitely had an experience at Lewisburg. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. And it was unexplainable. And then I was triggered when I saw it again. Stop. Yeah. And 
I won't ask you what it was, but like, do you have memory of that? Was it something that you went, that was a feeling that I experienced and I experienced this feeling, not like, I don't remember feeling that. No, I remember. You remember? Yeah. Shit. Yeah, but I wasn't aware of the movements and like my my physical movements. How I you just, were reacting to it. Yeah, I just remember the thoughts inside of my head and the feelings that I had, the physical feelings I had. I just didn't understand my movements and how I ended up getting from point A to oh point B. Oh, my God. I know. I keep <laughs> The chill factor on this episode is... Like, wild, because, like, everything you're saying, I'm just like, oh, my God. It's a trip. Like, when I come home, I just, I'm so comforted in the fact that, like, I have my husband and I have my cats that <laughs> sleep next to me, because if I didn't have that, I don't know what I would do. And here I go. I'm like, I just did five minutes of stand-up. I got to come down from this high. <laughs> this bitch is, like, in haunted houses and shit. Dear Lord. Um, oh, my God. I can't yeah. imagine. Well, what would the come down be? From something like that. Because that's... Kim, that's a lot of energy going on. Like, like, you have your energy and the energy of the spirits, the energy of the crew. Like... Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, there's there's days... So, immediately after, um, there's a few of us that either eat or drink in a group. (laughs) So, there's been times... (laughs) Like, when I saw the the Black Shadow at the Boscowan Inn, I wanted everybody in my room. Because I was like, I can't handle going to sleep until the sun comes up so everybody come to my room um so we drank and we ate and we just like all tried to figure out what it was um but then when I actually like the next day I sometimes don't want to be around anybody and I just want to have like a very simple day I want to go out for a walk and I want to decompress yeah because it, it's so draining boring. oh my gosh yeah and y- you wouldn't consider yourself like a medium no but I have definitely had situations where so what's funny is I've had situations where I'm like, no, discounting it, discounting it, discounting it. Meanwhile, the rest of my crew are like, Kim, you're psychic. And I'm like, no, way. no I'm not. And they're like, yeah, if there's anybody that is a psychic, I believe it to be you. Really? You yeah. just don't know it? Mm. You're a psychic and you don't know it? I don't even know if it's that. Like, there's a lot of like affirmations that I have throughout the day. But I also don't want to say I'm a psychic because I don't 100% know if I believe that. Mm, fascinating. Yeah. Okay. Next intoxicated episode. Kim and Danielle. Danielle yeah. gives yeah. Kim a tarot reading. Yeah, I'd love that. I would. I, I love would that. love that. Yeah. That would be so fun. Oh, my gosh. Um, I literally just had a thought. Oh, yeah. So, like, Nova Scotia. So, you, you film a lot around Nova Scotia. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have... I mean, we talked about Lewisburg. Halifax, specifically. Very haunted. Yeah. Lots of history here. Yes. Um, are there is there any stories, venues, areas that, like, stick out to you in Halifax that are, like... Oh, yeah. There's something here. Because, like, I always hear... I mean, you hear of the classic ones. Siddle Hill. Mm-hmm. Henry House. Mm-hmm. Have you been to Henry House? Never been there, nope. Oh, so I think at some point we got to do a ghost pub crawl. Yes. That would be so much fun. Kim, I'm just saying. That would be so much a fun. Crawl. A spooky crawl. I think it would be so fun to go. What's the etiquette when, you, when you're like approaching a venue to be like, can we just, uh, can we creep around after hours? <laughs> Hey, is it cool if I hang out here and like talk to the goats? Thanks. Because my thing is, is like I want nothing more than to like be in a vet, like in a place with just a couple people and do exactly what you do. Because I've watched it so much on TV, right? That I'm like, I would love to do that, but like, is that allowed? Is it hard to do that? What's the what's the deal with that? It's Touch and go. Some places are very receptive to people being obsessed with the fact that they're quote unquote haunted. haunted. They're like, um, oh yeah, go go use your little voice recorders. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, no, I've I've definitely reached out to some places. There's one fairly recently in Lunenburg that was like, no, we straight up don't want to be associated with anything like that. I'm like, okay, that's fine. To me, I'm like, any tourism is good tourism, though, right? Yeah, if we mention you. <laughs> Right. Because because you're only gonna bring in 
other people who are into ghost stuff. Right. Exactly. So really, you're not scaring anyone away. You're just bringing in a new audience. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. So apparently the Five Fishermen is very haunted. Five Fishermen. Yeah. So that's where they had the Titanic bodies. Yes. Yes. I also believe that the Maritime Museum of the Atlantic is haunted, although I don't know that they advertise that all that much. Oh, that place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this one's never mentioned, but I can only say from my experience, I think it's haunted. It's Pure 21. I used to work there. I yes. used to close down the museum late at night. Mm-hmm. There's an energy in that space. And, I, and you know, the, lots of history attached to it. Can I ask you a question? Because I was there not that long ago. Please do. I had, a, I had a really weird feeling in a certain space. Was it by all the suitcases? Like in the, well, there's suitcases everywhere. <laughs> so like when you go upstairs to the second floor. Yeah. And like over by, they've got like a big model of what the Pier 21 used to look like. And uh, there's like all these glass in suitcases. I felt it in that whole area, to be honest. Okay. But like, I would have to close that place down like after events, like late at night, like, you know, late at night, like 11 PM. But like, you know, no one else would be there. And yeah, that place feels haunted AF. I don't know. But haunted, again, stigma. I feel like there's a there's a bad stigma attached to the word haunted. Yeah. I feel like that place has so much history attached to it. And a part of me kind of believes that like if you were to have a significant moment in your life happen and then you were to die, you might want to go back to that place. So like that was a really happy place for a lot of people. Yeah, like maybe you met your loved one there. Maybe, yeah. Or, or like, maybe this was a new life for you when you exactly. came to Canada. Yeah. So maybe your spirit hangs around there. So maybe it's like a like a happy haunting? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I hope maybe? to believe sometimes. Yeah. Maybe? Oh, maybe, my gosh. Maybe this is like your favorite spot. What which, which do you think is the scariest place in Nova Scotia? Scariest, mm. hands down. Scariest. i got to think about that one for a second. Place to visit um, for hauntings. Oh. Putting you on the spot, I know. There is a house um, in Avondale, and it's called the Mount's Mansion, and you can stay there. It's an Airbnb. <laughs> Sarah's writing it down. She's like, our next intoxicated trip uh, getaway, we're going to go there. And yeah. they actually used it for filming Chapel Wait. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it is a magnificent home. Like, there's beautiful woodwork everywhere, and it's very... It's like you walk in there and it's so sad. Oh, I love it. So (laughs) it's like everything's kind of dark and there's like original Mm. murals and stuff on the wall, like hand painted murals and everything. And I just had this like overwhelming feeling of loss going there. Oh, crap. And they also dubbed it the honeymoon house because this guy built it for his wife and she got tuberculosis. And she was shipped off to New York to get better. And he would go and sit at this front window and sit there and wait for her to come over the hill. Because, like, there was only letters. There there weren't telephones at the time. No texting. No. (laughs) So he would sit there and wait for her to come home. And then he finally got the news that she died in the hospital in New York. So she never got to live in the house. So he was there all by himself. So That's so sad. Like, just the thought of, like, you know, having this wonderful life with this beautiful human and, like, building this amazing, gorgeous house that apparently had, like, first electricity in the whole region of Holy crap. So it was a very, like, very nice spot. And then just never being able to have the family and never being able to show your wife what you that built for her. would be so And sad. they traveled the whole world on their honeymoon and picked out, like, themes for each room. Like, this is going to be the Paris room, and we're going to buy all this furniture in Paris to put in the Paris room. And this is going to be the African room, and we're going to have all the safari stuff in here. So they still kind of have it set up that way. It's just... It's weird. Do people see him or her wandering around there? Him sitting in the front window. Because that's probably where he died. Yeah. So I stayed there. 
and I didn't realize like I was kind of freaked out by the room um there was a very small little porcelain sink in the room and it kind of kept playing with me and I'm like why is there a sink in the room there's no toilet like why was this an original fixture but that was intended to be the master bedroom so the woman could like wash their undergarments and everything in the sink there and so as I was laying down to go to sleep, I was like, this was supposed to be their master bedroom. This was supposed to be where they slept. Had their life. Yeah. And I don't know if it was me like in the, mil- the middle of the night doing it, but I did fall asleep with the light on. And when I woke up, the light was off, just like the, the night, the table lamp next to me. I don't know. That's a little freaky. Mm. Oh, my gosh. What was it called again? Mount's Mansion. Mount's Mansion. You can write that down. Yes. Holy it's, smokes. Same as Avalon? Um, Avondale. 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 See, that makes more sense. Yeah. I think it's the Avondale Road. I feel like universities are also oh, yeah. just riddled with spirits. I went to Santa Bax. Oh, yeah. Haunted. Yeah. And I, I, I oh, <laughs> Kim. Kim. <laughs> what? I stayed in that residence. Really? Mount St. Bernard. Did you ever have anything weird happen to you? This is what I'll say. I've never felt more like I was being watched in my Ooh. life. Like, just, it was a creepy residence as it was. Mm-hmm. It was old. It was, um, it, it was considered, like, the lame residence because it was, like, a quiet residence. Like, they, there wasn't a lot of parties that happened there. It was all women. Um, but I found like it was just a place where I think a lot of girls would sleep and then they would go elsewhere to party or, okay. or whatever. So it was, it felt desolate. So here's a question. Do you think it felt that way because of a quote unquote nun presence and people just like felt like they couldn't do anything bad in that mm. residence because oh, something was watching them maybe? or judging them? Maybe. I don't know. Just, May- just a thought. You could be right, but it was so creepy staying there. Like, I, I look back at that time, and I just go, like, I, 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 I've been in other residents. I've been to the Mount. Like, never felt creeped out at all. Okay. Santa Vax, old as shit, haunted as fuck. Right. <laughs> that should right. be their new slogan. <laughs> old as shit, haunted, haunted as, as fuck. fuck. Yeah. <laughs> just put that on the good goddamn one. brochure. Yeah, it's a good one. Oh, my God. I'm just loving all these all these stories. This is crazy. Um, We do have another segment, though, and I'm excited to get to this one. Okay. Kim's about to burn some bridges. Uh, <laughs> we're about to get into the unpopular opinion segment. Here we go. Here we go. Don't hate me for this, but... It's time for an unpopular opinion. What is your unpopular opinion? Zach Bagan sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so we've been referencing other shows yes. throughout this podcast. A big one is Ghost Adventures, which huge. I gotta say, Kim, I went through a big Ghost Adventure Adventures phase, uh, the, oh, a yeah. straight year. I think I watched it a lot. Uh, Not so much anymore, though. But, okay, what is your beef with Zach Baggins? Okay, there's a lot of beef. Um, I think that he thinks that his shit doesn't sting. (laughs) I think he thinks that he's super hot. And that, well, I mean, he is dating that plague girl. Oh, shit. Is it Holly? Oh, I didn't know he was dating someone. Yeah. Um, so I mean, maybe he's really good in bed. I don't know. Uh, but he wears obnoxiously baggy black pants. Yes. And I'm like, are you hiding something? Are you like secretly obese? Do you have like a huge pot belly or like a big badonkadonk? Like, why are you wearing (laughs) pants that are that baggy? I don't know. He looks very much so like millennial style, like 2000s B44. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> and like the hair and the super thick glasses i feel like he's trying to tap into like this nerdy side of him but then if you look closely it looks like he's always wearing foundation yeah always yeah and the thing that i can't stand about him is how obnoxious he is yeah. when he goes into a space like has i was saying about gaining trust he does not gain trust he walks in and he like demands the ghost to talk to him <laughs> 
Ah! And he pisses off demons. Right? We didn't even get into demons. I don't like... I don't like the subject. <laughs> Part two. Um, <laughs> that's so funny because, yeah, when I was in my ghost adventures stage... Yes. I had such a crush on him. Did you? Admittedly. What was, what was admittedly, your thing with them? I don't know. I just like assholes. Okay, okay. And maybe now that I've gone through more self-love stuff, like I I'm I mean, less attracted to him now for sure. I don't I don't see the appeal. But you're right. The the pissing off of spirits? Yeah. Why? What's that going to do? Nothing good. Right. And then you're going to bitch and complain about how why you have scratches on your body? Yeah. And and there's something about his voice too, where he's always talking like this and drawing everything <laughs> out. I'm like, buddy, don't try to set the tone more than it needs to be set. Oh my god, <laughs> I love that. Oh, just it's too much. That's so funny. So we're gonna tag Zach Baggins in this episode. <laughs> so. That- reached out to him on social media or it might have been twitter or something trying to convince him to bring ghost adventures to halifax did he ever respond to you no go god no see but i think i think he was like looking for like locations and i was like oh my god how fun would that be if ghost adventures came here but you guys we have our own show it's haunted on east link (laughs) um oh look at that segue kim when's the new season come out for haunted Uh, i believe it's october 23rd October 23rd. Yeah, around the corner. Okay. Yeah. I think I need to get an Eastlick account by that cuz I need to check it out based on what you're what you're telling me. And you have fun doing it? Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love the people I've met through it and it all started because of Booze and Bourbon. That's wild. I know. So you did the the Booze and Bourbon podcast. Yep. Um which is whiskey and paranormal. Yep. You talk about both, right? Yep. And uh and then they found you through that? no i think i found them um yeah my my friend sent me this link and she's like oh this local ghost hunting crew is looking for some more people and i was like what so went and met with paul with my friend jen and then the next thing you knew we were trying out on haunted that is so cool no we had we had started to do a couple of like very small small scale investigations and so we kind of showed him the videos and like what we were like on camera and then we were on the show oh my god that's that's so cool if you're ever looking for ghost hunters me and sarah yes want to ghost hunt so bad okay so we've been bearing the lead here we have some equipment yes we do shall we see some of this equipment maybe try some of it i don't really know how you want it like what's best to do this if it's a show and tell or maybe we we take one out and try to do a little session. Yes. I think, okay. I think the spirit box. And okay. And what's really cool is, is a handmade spirit box. I love this. Um, I also have a K2 meter, but I feel like there's a lot of electronics around here. So maybe it's not like the best. <laughs> it might not, a podcast might not be the best. Maybe the graveyard walk. We're, we're going to yeah. do it out there. Because we're yeah. the. So do you know anything about the All Vets Cemetery that's right by us? No. There's Tell tit- me. There's Titanic bodies. That's kind of what I thought. Yeah, there's some. But I didn't know for sure. Not all. The Clayton Park graveyard has more. Okay. But um, I think it's the I think it's the unidentified ones that are here, right? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Your neighbors. They're also having an identity crisis. <laughs> <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> um, okay, so this lovely spirit box. Um, was made by my friend who is also a fellow ghost hunter. He is currently in Maine, um, but he spent quite a long time as the caretaker of the actual conjuring house. Oh my gosh. So there's been a lot of documentaries and there's been a lot of, um, like YouTube sensations, like exploring with Josh that have gone to the conjuring house done investigations with John. And so John started making these spirit boxes and when he was making this one, I was like, hey, do you want to throw in a conjuring house ghost in there? And he was like, ha, ha, ha. But he sent me a video as soon as he had it up and working. And he was like, it just straight up said your name. And it did. He sent me the video. And it wasn't like, it wasn't like Kim. It was like, Kim. Like, it was really weird. 
So I've taken this on a couple of investigations since I got it. I got it about a month ago. Hasn't done anything. Yesterday, I decided to throw it on in my office and it said my name again. So let's think about this for a moment. We're not sweeping the same radio stations in Nova Scotia as we are in Rhode Island. So it shouldn't so say my name again. shouldn't be doing that. Are you ready? Yeah. Well, actually, let's show it a bit more. So okay. put it up to the camera. Yeah. So it kind of looks like a little boom box. It or does. Like a little, Definitely like, does. Like it looks, that oh, is, it looks like a little stereo. Okay. So how does the spirit box work? So it sweeps across radio stations. Right. So this is the one that you hear. Yeah. Okay. So it's probably going to be really annoying for That's people. okay. But, um, you want to know what? You guys, this is the Halloween episode. So you're going to have to deal with it. <laughs> Okay. So essentially, like, you're probably going to hear little blips of words, but if you hear a couple of words together or a whole sentence, then perhaps it's not the radio. So um, we'll get it warmed up. Okay. I'll ask a couple of questions, and then I'd love for you and you to also ask questions. Okay. Okay. And how much... Question for you again. How much time do you give a spirit box to work? Like, do you put a time limit on it or you just kind of feel it out? You just kind of feel it out, right? Yeah. You can't rush these things. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Is there any... Oh. Is there anyone here that wants to talk to us? Can you say Kim? Can you say Sarah? Can you try to say Sarah? Can you say your name? Maybe you should ask a question, Sarah. Oh. What was that? <laughs> Did that just say Kim? She got said like Kim. I heard it. <laughs> okay. I, wait, you keep going. Um, are you able to say what your name is? That sounded like Pete. See, how do you know when it's a voice and not a radio voice? Because you should. (laughs) That was really weird. That was really clear. Um, it, yeah, like if you start to get more than just a syllable, it's probably... A little bit more than just the radio. Like, I feel like we're getting stuff, but I'm not paying enough attention to it. All right, we gotta... Okay, so let's just... We'll be... We'll stop talking. I feel like that was a hi. Like, hi. How you doing? Can you say Kim? Can you say my name? Can you say Halifax? I feel like we're getting things, but not like enough to be like, yes, that is. Uh, Colette. Colette? I didn't like that voice that was like, uh, yeah. There was only something at the start there. Do you have anything that you want to say to us? Can you tell me what I'm pointing to? Okay, when do you guys have to ask a question? Um, can it just be anything? Um, is there anyone with us right now? Men. It sounded like it said men. 
<laughs> does that make sense to you, Sarah? Does that, does that kind of? <laughs> I had a psychic tell me once that I have a ghost husband that is watching. What? Yeah, and a pa- past life husband. Did she tell you what the name was? Stephen. Is Stephen in the house? Is Stephen around Sarah? I heard no. Did you hear no? I thought I did. <laughs> it's like, no, he's, he's checked like, out. He's yeah. moved on. <laughs> She's too alive for him. He doesn't put out enough for me, so. Okay, we're we're probably going to sign off here unless he has something really cool to tell us. Did you want us to come explore the graveyard close by? Quiet. Sarah, do you want to ask anything? Can you say Sarah? I thought it said, like, I can. Can't? Oh. Did you want to talk to me? Can you say that more clearly, please? Do you want to talk to Sarah? The noises are so creepy. I know. So creepy. It's like old timey radio. Yes. All right, guys. Well, we're gonna we're gonna sign off unless you have something amazing to say to us. This is your final chance. We're gonna turn you off. Can you say Kim again? Can you say my name? One more time. Try to say Kim. Tit. Sounded like tit. That's what I heard too. <laughs> tits. No tits tonight. Okay, bye. Wow. That's it be, wild. It can be really annoying. The sounds can be really annoying. And there's no volume control on it, eh? Uh, a little bit, but not a whole lot. No. So this is a K2 meter. So when it gets Ooh. close to um, any electromagnetic fields, it should technically, like, spike up to oh. the red. Oh, okay. Um, oh, I don't know. Do you want to hold it over there and see if, like, if Actually. you swipe it across anything, if it changes? No. It seems I would be curious to give it to you. Because Ooh. of that iPad, because that was Andrew's iPad. Oh. So, audio audio listeners, we're just going to... Does it beep or anything? No, it'll just it'll just bring up different colors of lights. I, I feel like I'm someone who wants so deeply to have a ghost experience. Right. But I've never... Like, she's too desperate. But I've never had one. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, nothing too, too crazy. Mm-hmm. Not Nothing that was shook me to the, the core you know what I mean um and it's interesting because you have to wonder if there's like ways that you could open yourself up to it more but I think it is just being present and like almost like almost telling them that you're so what else is interesting is is I've been trying to figure out like why are we getting hardcore evidence of ghosts on camera if they truly exist right like, if we can see them with our own eyes, how come we can't see them on camera kind of thing? And it just seems like every single time you are in the middle of ghost hunting and you turn the camera off or you leave, something happens. And I'm like, are they, like, playing tricks on us? Like, do they not want to be oh, seen? I think we do another quick spirit box session with the camera off and yeah. the podcast off just, just for the fun of it, just to yeah. see. Absolutely. Maybe they just, like... Yeah. They're, They're like, like, you're I'm putting me on the spot. I'd also be curious to put in the bathroom. There's something about my bathroom. I, I take this the cat room? doesn't go in there. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. The, the cat the doesn't go in there. Danielle had a moment where she was like, it feels heavier in there. I don't know. Just saying. But, oh my gosh. This was a wild ride. It was so much fun. <gasps> Holy smokes. <laughs> <laughs> I hope everybody can sleep okay tonight. <laughs> You're like, uh, <laughs> it's 
it's not my fault if you don't. <laughs> yeah, do not write us angry messages. Entertainment purposes only. Yes. Kim, this was lovely. It was so nice to finally meet you. This was so great. I hope this is going to come out the 29th, so just before Halloween. So uh, happy Halloween to everybody listening. I want you to tell everyone where they can like find all the things you do, follow sure. you. Yeah. Um, so basically on Instagram, if you follow Booze and Bourbon, you'll yes. get the most up-to-date stuff. So that's B-O-O-S-A-N-D Bourbon. And also if you want to just like reach out to me, you can find me on my website, which is Kim Moser, and that's M-O-S-E-R dot info. And watch Haunted. And definitely watch Haunted. And check out A Girl Named Olsky, because it's so good. <laughs> Thanks. Um, thank you so much for doing this. There's a bell right beside you. You get to close the episode by ringing that bell. Thank you for listening to the Intoxicated Podcast. If you enjoyed this week's episode, make sure you subscribe on whatever podcast app you use and leave a rating or review on Apple Podcasts. You can also give us a follow on Facebook and Instagram at Intoxicated Podcast and check out our video episodes on the Intoxicated YouTube channel. Until next week, feel hard and talk hard. Intoxicated Podcast is hosted and produced by Sarah McClellan, co-produced by Sarah Nicole, and brought to you by the messiness of life. <laughs>